you have heard, we have been working hard during this sixth administration to provide policy certainty and, and a strong policy base for biodiversity conservation, sustainable use, and equitable growth in the biodiversity economy. The development, consultation on, and finalization of the White Paper on Conservation and Sustainable Use of South Africa's Biodiversity Resources was key to this. The White Paper is aspirational and advocates for a society where all people have a high quality of life, a voice, and a nurturing earth to support them. The revised National Biodiversity Economy Strategy is founded on the key pillars of conservation, sustainable use and beneficiation of biodiversity business value chains and transformation, which will promote sustainable and inclusive socioeconomic development. This requires growing and sustaining conservation land and seascapes while promoting and facilitating inclusive biodiversity-based businesses that drive transformation of the sector. There are diverse successful approaches and enterprises associated with the biodiversity economy, many of which leverage value from otherwise marginal production land and seascapes. And this diversity enhances ecological resilience and offers potential for future growth. Notwithstanding this, the White Paper identifies the challenges of practices within the sector that have brought our country into disrepute, including inappropriate and illegal practices and activities, or actions that compromise animal well-being and ecosystem and genetic integrity and have negatively affected South Africa's reputation as a world leader in biodiversity conservation. As such, the White Paper also emphasizes the importance of the duty of care and ensuring the well-being of animals and nature more broadly. The strategy emphasizes that a successful biodiversity economy must be linked to ecosystem restoration as well as recognizing the importance of ecological infrastructure. Balancing use of the benefits, services, and values of biodiversity while sustaining these elements will ensure that both nature and people thrive in a sustainable way. This transformation must ensure the meaningful and equitable inclusion of rural communities and previously disadvantaged individuals into the economic value chains and into biodiversity conservation and sustainable use in general. Such inclusion is critical to address the triple burden of poverty, inequality and unemployment. A key challenge of the biodiversity sector is the financial support required to sustain conservation and grow the biodiversity economy. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to one of the key purposes of this endeavor. Later today, over 100 proposals will be pitched to investors. And this is a key function to make connections for win-win outcomes. I'm hoping that many of these projects will be picked up and come to fruition. And I can assure you that government will be there to support and facilitate their success. Ladies and gentlemen, we can no longer afford to have fragment fragmented, isolated approaches that are not inclusive or integrated. We need economic scaling. We need to think big. And I'm convinced if we work collectively here over the next three days, we can achieve this. And we will find that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. This will benefit communities 
while promoting and enhancing the well-being of animals and more, na and more generally nature. I encourage all of you to participate and contribute during the Indaba and on a continuous basis to give your very best efforts to the success of this endeavor. So the, the question is, how do you ensure that we have conservation, sustainable use and community beneficiation and recognition of the intellectual property that many uh, communities have when it comes to indigenous plants and their medicinal and pharmaceutical properties. And uh, what we know is that although South Africa has a wonderful record in um, both uh, conservation and sustainable use, one actually finds that uh, rural communities and uh, traditional authorities are primarily excluded from both owning conservation and benefiting from it. So I think that the, the intention of the white paper was to balance all of those issues. And the National Biodiversity Economy Strategy, which we are discussing here today, is really intended to drill down and say, how do we ensure that there is community beneficiation and how do we ensure that there is sustainable use at the same time that we are restoring and protecting our ecosystems and our biodiversity. I think that um, the majority of people who need to benefit from the biodiversity economy are living in rural areas and many of these people are far removed from the resources and the support that they require in order to sustainably utilize the um, products and opportunities that they have in their, their own backyard. So part of what we're trying to do is to find a way in which we are linking the ideas and the products that are emerging from communities with investors and um, philanthropies, funders, who would be interested in supporting those products and those programs. Well, I think the, the strategy is very ambitious. And we see the strategy as being located in government's overall socio-economic uh, development objectives. We are looking at the strategic advantages that different provinces have with regard to the biodiversity strategy and saying what already exists and what can we build on so that we are able to make a more meaningful contribution to lives and livelihoods.